Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Holoduck and we are playing Tyranny as a Noble Mage. Welcome back. Um, this is a bonus episode where we're just going to talk with one of our companions because we haven't uh, really talked with Lantry. But I'm sure he has a lot of interesting stuff to say and I'm hoping to gain the life sigil from him. That uh, is something that one of my viewers told me, Pavel. Um, thanks for that. So let's talk with Lantry. Lantry stops his stride, darting his hands about his bandolier and belt as he softly mouths off a mental inventory of his inks and quills. When at last assured his possessions are in place, he looks up at you with a smile. What might I do for you? Hmm. If you're going to be traveling with me, I need to know more about you. An understandable request. Let's see. Born in Sunder, no kids. What few longings of fatherly love I have got in my heart are satisfied by taking care of carrier birds. Learned my sigils and spells about 30 years back, and being able to defend myself has opened a life of field study, and haven't grown tired of the wandering just yet. I've written on all manner of subject, uh, magic, birds, language, geometry, but my main focus has been chronicling. I find there is no finer pursuit than recurring the events of our times. There will always be legends of what happened. Someone ought to be making note of the real thing. Aside from that, I don't know. I practice centering stance, draw portra portraits, make my own inks and have a sharp aversion to autobiography. I'm about as boring as watching Corel grow. How do you wind up here? When the Vellum Citadel was set aflame by Kairos' edict, which uh, we did, <laughs> I fled as fast as my knees would carry me. Every direction seemed a bad idea, but heading to Vendrian's well seemed the least suicidal option. Mind you, I was laboring under the misconception that the Vendrian guard had surrendered and the fighting in the valley had stopped. Looking first at his left arm, then his right, he reads through the assorted notes inked across his skin. Ah, yes, seventh of sparing. That's when I crossed the mountains. That would be two days, three days after the Vendring Guard jettisoned their surrender and claimed the citadel in the valley. The Vendring Guard nabbed me and several other sages moving through the valley. The other sages were sympathetic to the Vendring Guard. As for me, I just agreed so as not to get everyone killed. I think defying the Overlord is a really slow and stupid form of suicide. Uh, that's one way to look at it. Tell me about your work with the Oathbreakers. The Vendring Guard has several noble born in their ranks and they know their letters. The problem is they've come from noble houses scattered across the realms, each with their own private script. That's where the sages and I come in. Between us we're familiar enough with all the regional scripts to translate and coordinate. But translating is child's play. So I might have helped out a bit more. The old citadel at the center of the valley is a crumbling affair and there's no time for proper construction. It seemed a crime not to put my magic to work. What did you learn of their plans in your time there? It won't surprise you to know their strategy is largely non-existent. They cling to the hope that their example will inspire others in the tears to come to the valley and join the cause. The recent inaction between the Archons has emboldened them. Some even think the Archons fear the Vendrian Guard. I'm sure they have it quite wrong. What else can you tell me about the Oathbreakers and their forces? The Vendring Guard surrendered back in 429, and while a lot of them were conscripted in the chorus, three of the leaders, Captains Ari, Matani and Florian, never turned themselves in. Instead, they hid in the valley, gathering up what resources they could until they, uh, they, could, until they could challenge the local garrison. Uh, we already killed or had Matani surrender, and we also captured Florian. Um, have we met Captain Ari yet? I'm not sure, not that I not that I remember. At highest count early in the year, they numbered over 400. Their ranks swollen by soldiers of Haven and Azure that survived the war. They are a dying breed, these Oathbreakers. Most of the tears have finally come to realize that Kairos has already won. And before you ask, a connoisseur, as connoisseur of the inevitable, I've made my peace with the Overlord and bowed to his might. So you provide military aid to the Oathbreakers. When the servant of the Archon of Justice asks me that question, I can't help but assume it's the antecedent to some sort of punishment. I can't deny that as I assisted the Oathbreakers, but the alternative was to starve in a cell and maybe lose my head. 
I realize this is an offense to the overlord, but it's not like I increased their odds of winning in any significant way. Personal survival does not exempt one from observing the laws of Kairos. <laughs> Of course, a criminal can rationalize any debased act with the excuse of self-survival. I did not mean to imply such disregard for the Overlord's war, uh, laws. <laughs> How did you wind up a prisoner of the Chorus? I had to send some missives, and that meant getting to a clearing where my turns and doves might find me. The patrol with me was ambushed by the Scarlet Chorus. I tried to flee the scene, but some youngster tackled me and, well, out of one fire into another. That's been a running theme this year. Okay, let me ask about something else. What might I do for you? Tell me about your magic. Oh, I don't know. I don't much like to brag about things like that. Can you teach me anything? Sure, I can teach you how to blend your own inks, train birds to think you're their mom, how to turn a goat into parchment, but I'm sure you'd prefer to learn some magic. In the school of ink and quill still mattered. If the school of ink and quill still mattered, I'd maybe be more tight-lipped, but if we're going to travel together, you should know how to mend wounds, especially if I'm killed. I know the edict still looms, but if you have a few hours, I could show you the basics of healing magic, or at least how I learned it. I want to be honored to learn a little of what you know. Okay, I gained loyalty. Rummaging through his satchels, the sage produces a long quill and a crumpled piece of parchment. With seven strong strokes of the quill, he inks a pattern on the page. We'll start with first principles. When mending wounds and easing pain, we invoke the magic of the orphan midwife, Archon of Rebirth. By invoking her sigil, we channel her mastery, however briefly, through our hands. Now, trace the sigil, follow the lines in order I sketch them. Uh, can you tell me more about this Archon of Rebirth? Didn't realize you gave a care about your history. Well, the orphan midwife was born in 160, bowed to Kairos in 201. They say she walked, pl where she walked, plants would sprout, the sick would grow vigorous. She'd also send most folks into fits of rage and animals into heat. She sounds like quite a riot. We know her magic by way of one of her first disciples, who migrated to the Tears in 222 to spread her wisdom, an act that happened to be illegal under Kairos' law. For that and a host of other transgressions, the orphan midwife has been imprisoned for over a century, or so the story goes. Follow his inst instructions. Yeah, why not? Since this isn't your first cantrip, I'll move a little quickly, but I think you can keep up. Lantry walks you through countless repetitions of the signing of signing the mystic sigil. For hours, you wave your hand in the air to no effect, until at last you sign the pattern in the air and feel a rush of power through your veins. Oh. Um... Okay, so yeah, that, that's it. So if you need to heal pain as opposed to purge an infection, you'd move your hand like so. But you know, that's enough for now, and I think the rest you can figure out on your own. Great. So I think we've got that sigil now. Uh, tell me more about your magic. Um, I want to know what you can do. My major areas of focus have been preservation, concealment, and healing. Arts that have served me well in this newfound life as a peripatetic prey animal. Um, peripatetic is um, sort of um, wandering around, moving around. There was a, a school of philosophers in ancient Greece, uh, the Peripatos, um, who were known for philosophing while moving around. I guess he's, he's sort of... Um, he, has, he has been around, even though he's quite old. The sages study all kinds of magic, but as a chronicler, I wanted magic that would help me see more. Achieve, archive more, protect objects of historical value. Seeing as I feel like an old relic in need of some protection, my skills suit me well. Okay, let's speak of something else. Tell me about the sages. For hundreds of years, the sages have been devoted to the collection and preservation of knowledge. We are scholars, bookmakers, archivists and students of the mystic and the mundane alike. The wisest of our guild, not that I truly belong in that category, are versed in sigils and spellcraft. Or that's at least how it used to be. With the destruction of the Vellum Citadel, the sages have been scattered to the winds. There were once more sages than I could name. Many have died or been taken by Kairos's forces. Taken prisoner by Kairos's forces. What do you know of the Vellum Citadel? Lantry scowls, his writing hand becomes unusually still. 
I once felt a rush of pride at that name. Now it's a blight on our reputation. Lanchi clears his throat, reasserting his smile. The Venom Citadel was a beautiful sanctuary of parchment and ink. We had amassed knowledge from the Northern Empire to the coast of the Tears. It would take a score of lifetimes to learn all the Citadel could teach you. But the sages in charge of the Venom Citadel thought themselves above Kairos' rules. The Overlord learned the sages were copying and spreading lies and forbidden knowledge. Kairos put an end to the life at the Citadel with his Edict of Flame. Lantry stops, putting a hand to his face. All that knowledge set aflame. And it is actually quite sad, but I mean... What can you do against Kairos' Edict? <laughs> when we bind books, we bind them to last. Our most important tomes were warded against fire and other maladies. Lantry skulls. So many of the books remain intact as the shelf and floor melt away. I suppose it's still there if you want to brave danger and certain death for it. There's good reason they call it the burning library now. I wonder if I... Um, we learned about these um, forge-bound um, smiths. People that um, are able to sort of withstand great heat and stuff. I wonder if I could convince one of these guys to sort of wade into the flames and... Uh, Get those tomes out for me. That could be pretty useful. Who leads the school? I keep learning more names of those who died during the Edict of Fire, so my information could be obsolete. But with Sage Krevnik incinerated, Sage Renata would be the current provost. And if she dies, well fuck, thanks to all the recent deaths, maybe I'll be next in line. Let's archive that away under things to worry about later. <laughs> in truth, there isn't much good left to lead. Our library fortress is in ashes, our membership in disarray, and it doesn't help that we have something of a spotty reputation here in the tears. Fear of magic being something of a local specialty. What's your role in the guild? I'm one of the chief writers of the Chronicle. It is our attempt to record the truth of all things in their proper sequence. It's the ongoing life work of generations of sages, and I have the honor of witnessing history and having my vantage point to be a matter of record. The sages would not bow to Kairos, yet you do. True, my peers can grasp many abstract concepts, but on the subject of hopeless wars, their stupidity rises to idiotic splendor. The sages believe themselves the mightiest magical guild in the tears, and they could even back that claim, but they mistook being the best for being a match for Kairos. How it is so many can study so much history and learn so little. I've studied Kairos and the Archons in great detail. Enough so that I'm no longer blinded by fear of their magic, nor by envy of their special gifts. To my mind it seems like nonsense to bow to a mere king or queen when we could serve Kairos, the living embodiment of rulership. Yeah, I like your stance. <laughs> Let me ask about something else. Oh, we're through. Let's see if we did um, go through all the options over here. I think we did. All right, then. Okay, that was that was a shorter bonus episode than than the others. I'm going to go over the sigil of life in the in the episode um, proper. Um, so you will most likely have seen that already. But um, for now, thank you very much for watching this bonus episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you didn't, tell me why in the comments so I can improve. And if you want to see more of the series, if you want to see me play more Tyranny, then please consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. Hope you join me next time. Thanks and bye-bye.